Well, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here today and to present before you some reflections on my experience here in this uh, Argosy Collaborative Faculty Exchange. First of all, I just want to say that it's been really an incredible semester, an awesome opportunity to be here. I'm very thankful for the Olin community being so welcoming, and especially for Jessica, uh, John, and Rob, who have come to UTEP during the summer a couple of times to conduct workshops and to facilitate this uh, collaboration. It's just really been amazing, so I'm very thankful for the opportunity. So the semester, while I've been here, several people have asked me some questions through the semester, and I thought maybe I would frame my response, my reflection on this semester in these, um, responding to these frequently asked questions. So what brought me here in the first place? How did I get here? And what have I learned, especially with respect to pedagogy? And then what will I do when I return to UTEP in just a few weeks? And then finally, what are some general thoughts on Olin? So first of all, uh, this Olin Argosy Collaborative Faculty Exchange was facilitated by the Argosy Foundation, which um, has provided funding to allow these institutions to partner. And so some of that looks like meetings and workshops that Olin has conducted uh, at UTEP, and then also opportunities for UTEP faculty to come visit Olin and even live here for a semester. So there was a partnership with UTEP, in particular, Roger Gonzalez is the director of the Leadership Engineering Program, and he had previously uh, had met Jessica and Mark and was familiar with Olin. And so this seemed like a great opportunity to establish a more formal relationship and collaboration, especially because of some of the differences between Olin and UTEP. So Olin is a relatively small, private, residential college campus. UTEP is quite different. The, the college, just the College of Engineering, is almost 10 times the size of Olin. And the university is 23,000 students. So it's a significantly larger in scale. Most of our students commute. I think the number is something like 15% of our students actually live on campus. And it's a public institution which has a much more um, control and bureaucracy with respect to curriculum changes and modifications. And so there's not quite the flexibility and nimbleness that Olin enjoys. So it seemed to us that this opportunity to collaborate between Olin and UTEP was really beneficial because if we can demonstrate what Olin has pioneered, if we can demonstrate that that is transferable, if, if we can translate that to a context like UTEP, then we believe that this will show great progress towards further expansion around the United States and, and around the world. So I came to visit in February of 2013, just uh, eight months ago, um, actually a couple of days after a big snowstorm like we're enjoying now and see snow piled up as tall as the cars. What was really powerful for me was the opportunity to observe, to be aware of a way, a model, an experience of teaching and learning that is very much different from what I experienced as a student and what I have known as a professor. And I, I don't want this to, to be glossed over. I genuinely believe, tragically, that there are a large number of faculty across the nation that don't really know of any other way to teach other than that which they learned as, as a student. And so I really believe that there's an important aspect of Olin's mission to impact engineering education abroad, simply inviting people to come pay attention and observe what Olin has pioneered. I had the great opportunity to visit the Olin Collaboratory, previously I2E2, Summer Institute. 
And I have to say that this was really critical for me in helping me think through and process the philosophical framework that is so essential, the core of who Olin is, I believe. And some of these pedagogical fundamentals. Again, sadly, I think there is a significant fraction of faculty, engineering faculty, who haven't been trained in the basic educational principles that, it, that are often taught to elementary school, middle school, and high school teachers. And so this was really powerful for me. My wife actually has a master's degree in elementary education. And in this summer institute, I feel like I really learned some of the core principles that she learned in her education to be a teacher. And then I've had the opportunity to be here this semester, this fall 2013 semester. Uh, I had the opportunity to teach a course, Transport Phenomena, which is just mostly fluid mechanics and heat transfer. And Brian Storey usually teaches that course, but he's on sabbatical this year. So it's a really great opportunity for me to learn and put into practice the principles that I learned in that summer institute. And so I feel like my experience this semester has very, been very much the do-learn that the professors try to implement in their classrooms here at Olin. And I, I think, for me, it's really important that practical capability that I feel like I've developed this semester, and especially that transition from the traditional full class meeting of lecture into a, a broader portfolio of engagement with students. And so just thinking about that classroom experience, trying to enjoy a dynamic relationship with the students, and then just practically, how do you design and implement a project in a class? And I certainly don't feel like I'm an expert uh, but at least having one experience here in a more understanding environment where the students are patient with me and I have professors around who support and encourage the implementation, this has really been an incubator experience for me. And then I feel like I've learned a lot about the value of assessments. Again, I don't feel like I've mastered assessments, but I feel like I've practiced it enough this semester that I see that it's a really critical and essential aspect of making a course really valuable and effective. So what have I learned in terms of pedagogy? Well, first of all, I would say, and, and when people ask, what do you feel like is the really critical distinction of Olin? I have to say that the collegiality here is remarkable. The collegiality among faculty, the collegiality between faculty and staff, but perhaps most surprising to me is the collegiality between faculty and students. That generally, faculty really attempt to treat students as colleagues, as collaborators in a teaching learning experience. That it's not just I'm a teacher and I'm going to tell you what you need to know and you need to listen, but I'm, we're going to treat each other as colleagues in this, this desire for us to learn together as we go. And I feel like that's essential to who Olin is. And, and maybe a, supporting that or, or permeated through that is a desire to really facilitate intrinsic motivation in students. And I, and I would argue even in faculty that these three principles, autonomy, mastery, and relatedness, are really carefully and intentionally thought out in the practice of the classroom. So with respect to autonomy, how do we allow students to have some influence in their own education so that they have ownership, they have buy-in, they are a stakeholder in this teaching and learning collaboration? 
and then a sense of mastery that at the end of this activity or the end of this project or at the end of the course, the students have developed a genuine sense of mastery. I, I have some confidence that I know that which I have studied. And then a sense of relatedness that what I've learned in this experience is related to my life as an engineer, my practice as an, as an engineer, that I'm confident that I'm not wasting time on knowledge that I'm never going to use, but I can see the relevance and the, the applicability of these studies. I also feel like there's a really valuable appreciation of critical thinking and reflection not just crunch some numbers and you get an answer and it was the right answer so now let's move on but what are we trying to do here what did we learn from this process and even to some engineers this seems strange but how do you feel about this what you know how could we make this more enjoyable and i think there's an aspect of philosophy there that's really valuable that we shouldn't think of engineers just as technical accountants who can crunch some numbers and give you an objective answer, but we should, in the education process, really embrace some of these liberal arts perspectives on critical thinking and analysis, and even, even the philosophy that undergirds engineering. So with respect to course design, um, mastering cognitive skills versus covering content. I feel like my perspective just unconsciously has been focused on here are the chapters that we need to cover in this textbook and we need to make sure we have homework assignments in each one of these pieces and and so by the end of the course we have covered the content that's the way a lot of courses I are taught I believe and now I'm beginning to think from the perspective of what do I want students to be able to do with this knowledge when they walk away from this class how will they be empowered to use this knowledge in some way? And that, I think that's a really important distinction. With respect to the class meeting in this space, at this particular meeting time, a philosophical change, a paradigm shift from my perspective. Previously, I thought of myself as a technical expert. I know this content. I need to convey this content to the students. But now I see myself more as a coach. Here's a context for engineering. Let me help in this discovery process and you learning and developing and mastering these skills in this particular environment. And in that case, I need to provide intentional and thoughtful, strategic instruction, but I need to be careful to limit that so that I make sure that the students have time to think, reflect, talk, discuss, respond, ask questions, and that iterative process takes time. So at the beginning of the semester, unconsciously, I just started out in the normal way that I teach, and even though I had just come from the Summer Institute and I knew philosophically that that's not the way that it was supposed to work for optimal experience, but, but I just found myself in, in that routine. And so the first couple of class meetings, it was all lecture. I went up till, you know, five minutes before the end of class, and I, I remember thinking to myself, how do you compress all of this content into a smaller section of the class so that you can have time to discuss? And I finally realized you just can't cover every every little detail that you want to cover that's in the textbook. You can't, you can't just exposit on all this content. And it, what really woke me up was I was lecturing and I was looking at the clock in the back of the room and I was thinking, man, I'm running up on the end of class again. And John Stolk walked up and he was looking into the next classroom. He wasn't even checking on me or anything. But just to see him and see the clock and I realized it's the end of class and here I am lecturing, and he's caught me red-handed, you know? <laughs> and I, I realized I have to change. I have to change the, the way I have taught. And so from that point forward, 
I tried to disengage and, and compress that time by thinking about the, the salient points. What do, what do I really need to focus on so that the students are empowered to walk away with the skills that, that I hope that they will master at the end of this course? So through that, I began a dialogue with the students. Okay, so help me in this. You guys have been really patient with me. Help me grow as, and mature as a professor in this type of learning environment. And so I, at first, you know, you have, you have to put yourself out there. It's a risk. But they were kind and patient with me. And as I opened up with them, I feel like the class evolved into a more of a conversational atmosphere. I also realized, I, I would say, admittedly, apologetically, at the end of the class, I realized the importance of regular de deliverables. So I just assumed that, oh, this is Olin, the students are familiar with projects. So you just assign a project and then check in with them at the end of the semester. How did it go? That's not exactly the way I did it, but I don't feel like I invested enough time to think through discrete intervals of progress to facilitate with respect to assignments and deliverables. So, there's this love-hate relationship with assignments and deliverables, but I think in the classroom, especially when the students have several other courses that are competing for time and investment, that a real practical way that you distribute that effort throughout the semester is with regular deliverables and, and uh, project assignments. So I'm going to do that better next semester. So um, I think overall there's a portfolio approach with homework, projects, and exams that if you invest entirely on really long homework assignments, you know, it's just grueling homework assignments, I don't feel like that's the most effective way. And at least discussing with the students in my class over the last several weeks about their experience with my project in this class, I feel like if you just have only a big project, that somehow that's not quite the optimal experience either. So I think there's a balanced integration of homework, projects, and exams. And maybe there's some flexibility there in the, in the sense of the, the personality of the professor in the particular class that is being taught. So finally, I would say um, some ambiguity and failure is just part of the engineering experience. And often we learn more through failure than we do through success. And, and again, that assessment piece is just really important. Knowing how you will be assessed and thinking about being able to assess yourself, being able to assess your peers in an objective way, and receiving assessment from a faculty member. I think is really important. So what will I do when I get back to UTEP just in a couple of weeks? Our semester starts in just a month. Well, I'll have some ideas. First of all, to serve in the leadership engineering program, provide support and mentorship in that program. With respect to the civil engineering department that I'm a part of, I'm really excited about transforming my spring 2014 courses. I've taught this water wastewater class six times and it's going to be significantly different this upcoming semester. I usually teach conventional municipal drinking water treatment system design, advanced water treatment processes like membrane treatment, and then uh, conventional municipal wastewater treatment plant design. And so I think I have a prime opportunity for three projects in that class. And there, actually, there's a town that's only a half hour drive away that doesn't have uh, treatment systems, it's a small enough town, that I think it would be a great opportunity for a real world project with real world application to do the preliminary design of these treatment systems for this town. So that's, that's my goal for that class. I also teach a graduate level class, Advanced Physical Chemical Water Treatment Processes, that really goes more into the theory of individual, the performance of individual unit processes. And you can, 
provide some data from some plant operations and then analyze it. But what I think would be really great is to partner with some of the local water and wastewater treatment plants and actually go have the students experience an opportunity to go sample data for themselves. They get their own data. They get to analyze their own data and put this theory to application in, re in real data that they collected. And so I'm, I'm really excited about that relatedness and that mastery being improved through a real world project experience. I'm also going to advocate within the Department of Civil Engineering for other faculty members to implement projects in their courses similar to what I've learned and observed here at Olin. So for example, um, I, I think uh, several other design courses already have projects, but collaborating with those professors to think about making them a little bit more related and a little bit more real world, hands on. I've also been thinking of the idea of recommending or offering to move my course from the upper division to the lower division because we don't really use calculus or higher level math in water wastewater treatment plant design. So it would be, I think it would be great to have an earlier experience in the curriculum where students can experience hands-on project-based learning. And then I'm the faculty advisor for the American Society of Civil Engineers student chapter and we have two annual projects, the steel bridge and the concrete canoe. And I've known that these are important because I experienced them as a student when I was in school, but I see through new eyes the value of these experiences. So I'm going to be much more supportive and intentional about encouraging student involvement in these team projects. Finally, I think just in the hallway, I'm going to have opportunity to talk to people. People know that I came here for a semester. They're going to be curious. What did you learn? How are, how are you different? I'm going to have opportunity to translate some of my experience and hopefully encourage other people it, in a diffusive way to experience the transformation that I have. So uh, finally, the, the best question that I've enjoyed, what do you think of Olin? So I have to say it's a bold mission. And, and I, I love this quote, so I'm just going to read it. Olin College is intended to be different, not for the mere sake of being different, but to be an important and consistent contributor to the advancement of engineering education in America and throughout the world and to its graduates to do good for humanity. This is remarkable. To have the vision to impact the world in engineering education, that is bold. And at the same time, couple that with, with philanthropy, with an aspect of being a servant of humanity. I love this. I love this vision. In my experience, it's more than just a vision. There's, there's a culture here, an ethos of people philosophy of teaching and learning that really focus, I think, focuses in on collaboration. Treating each other as colleagues, as collaborators, faculty and staff, faculty and students, together an appreciation of entrepreneurship and creativity. Entrepreneurship in the context of individual class projects, entrepreneurship from the faculty's perspective in creating new courses and teaming together to create valuable learning experiences. We talked about awareness previously, that reflection. It, in fact, the opportunity that I have to stand before you right now and reflect on my experience, I think is an artifact of this culture, this ethos of awareness. And this is not to be ignored, a perspective that engineering education could be enjoyable. That engineering education doesn't have to be grueling. Oh man, I'm glad I survived those four years of grueling homeworks. No, that's not what we want. We want students to be encouraged, excited about the joyful opportunity that you have as an engineer 
to benefit humanity through your creative exercise of your skills. I think Olin has an inspiring and pioneering future. I, it's clear, it is clear that Olin has pioneered an engineering education. I believe that the next phase will demonstrate pioneering in implementing and collaborating across multiple institutions, especially the, the, from the perspective through the, the lens of the collaboratory. The Summer Institute was invaluable to me to learn these basic pedagogical principles and to, to be convinced of philosophies of teaching and learning that were different than what I had, a philosophical change. I feel like very much the, my experience and engagement with Olin has gone up Bloom's level of taxonomy that when I first came in February, it was just like basic knowledge, just an awareness. And then through the Summer Institute, some understanding and some application. And now being here this semester, some application, analysis, evaluation, synthesis. I feel like Olin has transformed me. And I feel like that Summer Institute was critical for that. And then also these institutional partnerships like Olin and UTEP. I am so excited to see Olin transferred and infused into UTEP engineering. So I told you my wife has a master's degree in elementary education. And this is one of her favorite quotes. And after being here this semester, this is my favorite quote. William Butler Yeats says, education is not the filling of a pail, but the lighting of a fire. I feel like that captures the essence of Olin. You're setting students on fire. You've set me on fire. And I'm excited as we work together, as we collaborate to set the world on fire.